part two of the pain on the face of Andreas Cloden, who sits in fifth place overall in the Tour de France, one place and just two seconds behind Bradley Hickwiggins as the attack comes again. This surely will explode the group. Where does this man kick like that from? And where does Lance Armstrong get it from as well, Phil? Because he's right in there on the slope of the wheel of Alberto Contador, and they've got Frank. Well, who they've got Frank and they've got Wiggins, so if they've got Frank, they're going to have to hang up uh, here because uh, the first three riders in the overall classification of the Tour de France ride in front of our cameras now. The white jersey of Andy Schleck, the yellow jersey of Contador, the blue jersey of Lance Armstrong. They are together, and this is the way they will be on the podium tomorrow in Paris. Garate has gone, and he sees and knows that there's a return coming from behind, and he's now thinking about the possibility of getting to the finish on his own. He's got 47 seconds over the yellow jersey group, and this is the move that he had to make if he's going to resolve the Tour de France of Team Rabobank. They've not had very much luck at all throughout the whole of this tour, and he could relinquish that today. Well, this will be the biggest win of his life if he stays away for a victory on one one two. He's made his move at just on one kilometer to go. I'm not sure we'll see any banners now because the wind has blown them away. I think they're all in Marseille, quite honestly. As we look here now at the white jersey again, oh, he's beginning to look as though he's getting tired, Paul, but what a rider. What a man. He has thrown every attack that he can at Alberto Contador and Lance Armstrong to try and dislodge Contador. He's not been able to do that at all. He's not been able to do that with Armstrong either. This is a little bit of a difficult moment for this man, and this is Vincenzo Nibali sliding backwards. It's also difficult for Brad Wiggins. Uh, Wiggins he's coming back, I believe. In his sights, he's got to hold on. Uh, he can still hold his fourth place here. He just has to get himself into a rhythm that is comfortable, so he tries to limit his losses over this final one, one and a half kilometers to the summit of the Mont Ventoux. Garate is holding on to 30 or 40 seconds over the yellow jersey group, and he may well start to nurture dreams of winning Pelizotti's at 22. Frank Schleck, who is up here, is 24 seconds he requires over Bradley Wiggins uh, to take his fourth place off him. And Wiggins is just about holding them in sight, but that acceleration earlier by Schleck has almost brought them up here to Pelizotti. Well, Pelizotti looks over his shoulder. He's starting to learn why this climb is a, a climb that needs to be respected. It's a beast of a climb in the heart of Provence. Andy Schleck again out of the saddle. He really has had the legs this afternoon, but he's not been able to outfox and outwick Alberto Contador or Lance Armstrong. He never ceases to keep looking over his shoulder, and the reason he's doing that, Phil, is he's trying to look after his own brother. Well, this is all a Tony little bit Martin's further down. Come back. Tony Martin has come back up to the leader here, so it's still two as they approach. We've got a banner up here, and I'm not sure what it will be, because uh, it's got nothing on it. It should say one kilometer ago. I don't see a kite, uh, but it could be exactly a kilometer from the finish now. Martin is back in here. Huge efforts required. Will there be enough lull in the action behind to give them their head? What a brilliant one, too, that would be. Well, there you can see the flags are indicating how strong these crosswinds are, and there, a little bit further back, is probably the group. And uh, one rider still in front of the yellow jersey group, and it's still Franco Pelizotti. Alberto Contador just dancing on those pedals of his on the slipstream of uh, Fra Andy Schleck. Armstrong is doing a phenomenal performance here this afternoon, Phil. Uh, I had a feeling at one stage that he might have been put under pressure, but that's not going to be the case. Well, Armstrong has never seemed under pressure. Contador has always been at or near his side, looking at him there to check on him, just like this rider has searched for his brother to try and pull the last ounce of strength out of his brother's body to dispose of Bradley Wiggins and Lance Armstrong. The only chance now for Frank Schleck is to replace Bradley, and that's not enough time. Bradley, you've got to ride your heart out now because you are holding fourth place by the skin of your racing shorts. Yeah, he started the day at 5.36, but more importantly, what he did was started the day uh, one second ahead of Cloden. Cloden's behind him on the road, and he's looking at about 23 seconds. He's going to get 20. He must not lose 24 seconds. It's as simple as that. If he doesn't, he'll hold fourth. Well, looking over his shoulder, Andy Schleck, once again, they've pulled uh, Pelizotti back into the fold. Armstrong is still there and still looking comfortable. There are now only two riders up the road in front of this group. This and is the big sprint. This is the finish now. And Garate, a little bit stronger, much more experienced than Tony Martin, a rider who we think one day could win the Tour de France. Today he'll finish second on one one two because Garate, the first man to attack the mountain, has finished it off. He's
got the stage with now. The times that matter are right here. Well, Armstrong sitting there on the wheel of uh, Andy Schlenker, and he was on the defensive today. He knew he had to do a special performance to stay right at the top. And there, uh, Phil, you're looking at first, second, and third in the overall classification. Andy Schlenk, Lance Armstrong, and Alberto Contador. Well, this is a victory for Alberto Contador in the Tour de France now. As he follows the man in the white jersey, he might even try to take him, I'm not so sure. He's still watching Lance Armstrong, making sure he's with him. As they come up to the line, it is Andy Schleck that got second. Contador salutes as winner of the Tour de France, and Armstrong is there. Frank Schleck is there. Now, if it comes up at 69.109 on the clock, then Wiggins will lose his fourth place in the Tour. So 109, it's my count. I might be a second out. Watch out for Wiggins now. Can he get up here before that bunker? Yes, he can. Well done, Bradley Wiggins. He pulled himself inside out there for a look at that man. He's pushed himself into the oxygen deck that took him to three Olympic gold medals just to hold on a little bit further down. These guys are trying to defend their positions in the top ten in the overall classification. This is Christophe Lemovel behind him, the American Christian van der Velde. Well, these are the remnants of the mountain climbers now, but what a race we have seen. This is Vandenberg. Claude Mumbers lost a little bit of time here. He was coming up the mountain in fifth place in the overall. I think he might well stay in sixth place now. He'd have lost out to Frank Schleck. Uh, maybe he's lost out too to Nibali, but I don't think so. But the clock will decide, of course. Uh, but that was a, a desperate finish by Bradley Wiggins, and he'll hold on to his high finish in the tour now. And this is the rider coming up, Christian van der Velde, his teammate, Wiggins' his teammate, uh, who finished fourth last year, and now it'll be Wiggins in that slot. Well, they've defended uh, perfectly over the final few kilometers. They rode extremely well at Garmin to put their man, Bradley Wiggins, uh, at the front end of the race as they started to climb. But this has been a courageous run by this man, too, Christophe de Mavelli. He moved into the uh, top ten because of his place into a breakaway, and he's defended exceptionally well through all of the outs and in the individual time trial. He's going to finish probably at the end of the day in eighth or ninth place overall. Well, the American Garmin Slipstream will be happy tonight because I think Van der Velde, here he comes, has done enough to retain his eighth place overall in this year's tour to marry up to his fourth place last year. And remember, he came here after quite a bad injury, to say the least, uh, in the Giro d'Italia. Well, this is the final sorting out of the Tour de France because tomorrow we head up to Paris and we'll see a good race, but it, by tradition, won't alter the overall positions. This was the battleground today. It certainly was. Daniel Rigi, another survivor of that early morning breakaway of 16 riders, uh, but uh, Andy Fleck did everything he could to try and dislodge Bradley Wiggins and Lance Armstrong to try and benefit his brother Frank, but it certainly was not going to happen. Leon Sanchez in the black jersey coming up to the top, but Sandy Cassar in the white jersey there with uh, Jose Luis Arrieta. And uh, this is what it looks like on top of the world. And uh, we've got here from the, the finishing line, you can get a 360 degree view around this, uh, this mountain, uh, mountain which is nicknamed Bald Mountain, is the highest point of the massive of the Baronies. But this is the man who got the glory this afternoon. The sprint by Juan Manuel Garati, former Spanish national champion. He saved the Tour de France for Team Rabobank this afternoon by winning one of the most famous stages as he came up to the top here to get that victory. A great performance, hasn't had a victory at all this season. In fact, he hasn't won a race, Bill, since 2006 when he won a mountain stage of the Giro d'Italia. What a wonderful win, and well deserved. What a way to win a one by two. You break away three kilometers into the stage and you win at the top of the mountain 164 kilometers later. I think he deserved that, Paul.